Well, hello there, challengees, and welcome to the Always Better Challenge Show, the show designed to help you take steps today that lead to a better and happier tomorrow. I'm your humble host, Joe Bedford, and today's show is going to be a little different than some. I believe we're going to call this a five-minute product review. I think I may have done one similar to this before. Um, but what happened was I just saw that there was a lot of interest online in information on this particular product and so decided decided to do a show about it so that I can put some information out there. Um, the product is called AnyDesk and so today's show is going to be just a quick uh, you want to call it a review or just a sort of a rundown explanation of what this program is and what it does. It is a program that I think would be useful to most people actually. So AnyDesk is a software download. So this is a program that you download and install on your computer. It is, I know, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems. And what it does is it allows remote access of one computer from another computer. So when I said, you know, well this program obviously would be very useful like to an IT professional who needs to perhaps either update remote computers or assist remote users who may be having problems. Um, you know, you could even use this to show somebody how to use a program or, you know, anything like that because you're basically, you can sort of take control of their computer and use it just like you were sitting at it yourself. So it could also be used for presentations, it could be used for webinars, but when I said that it's something I think could be use, useful to most anyone, the, the idea that I had is that you could use this if you're at home to access your work computer, you know, with permission from your boss. I'm not encouraging you to do anything under the, under the radar here, but um, it would, you know, allow you, if it's installed on both computers, you can remotely access your work computer and then it would be just like you're sitting at your work computer and you'd be able to access anything that you would be able to access if you were sitting there. Um, another use I thought of is if you're on vacation and bring your laptop with you, you could access your work computer or your home computer the same way. So I, I just thought this would be a very useful program and perhaps this is why there seems to be so much interest in this program online. So how it works is, first of all, obviously, as I said, you download it and install it on your computer, and it would have to be, of course, downloaded and installed on the remote computer as well. In other words, the computer that you want to connect to. Both, both computers have to have the software installed. And then to connect to another computer, you need to know their, um, their code. And, I, and I'm trying to remember the, word, the, the terms that they use to explain this in the program. I, I think they call it either an alias or a code, which are slightly different things but basically it's the it, it's what identifies your computer so it's either going to be uh, a number like a almost like a telephone number or it might be a, a name and so you have to know the code for the computer that you want to connect to so if someone like you know if you're wanting to connect to my computer I would have to somehow communicate to you you know on the phone or text message or email or whatever and I'd have to let you know what my code is then using the AnyDesk program you could put that code in and and ask to connect to my computer I do have to give you permission to do that because it's so when you send that connection request that comes up to me and it says you know so and so Frank Johnson whoever wants to connect with your computer and it allows me to accept that or reject that and it also allows me to set permissions as far as what I'm gonna allow the person who's connecting my computer to do so um, at, at the very least, they're going to be able to see my desktop, my computer desktop, just like they were sitting in front of the computer. Um, but the, 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 the permissions that I can either grant or not grant, um, I can allow them to hear sound. So in other words, they'd be able to hear the same sound that I would hear if I was sitting, you know, the same sound coming over my computer speakers would be coming over their computer speakers. Um, I can allow them to take control, which means that they can actually use their cursor to 
you know, click on things on my screen and open, you know, again, just like I, I, they were sitting at the computer, they're able to control it. If I don't give them that access, they can look, but they wouldn't actually be able to open icons or, you know, do anything like that. Um, a, a neat feature though, they still can point with their cursor, so you would still see their cursor moving around the screen, and it actually has their name by it, so you can tell that it's not your cursor. And, and you, they can even click and it'll, it'll make a little like shows that they're clicking but it doesn't actually do anything but so that you know if you were trying to like show somebody how to do something you could definitely do that and wouldn't necessarily need to have that full control to do that if you had full control you could just walk right through it and show them exactly how it was um, you also an, another one of the permissions is allowing them to use the clipboard and the clipboard near as I can tell the only thing that that's used for is file transfers and I actually found this a little bit confusing I did figure out how to do it but you can actually transfer files between computers as long as this clipboard permission is given so how you would do that like if there was a file on your computer I could I could if I had control of your computer I could go to that file and copy it on your computer and then on my computer like on my desktop or wherever I could paste that same file and it would and that would go so it would be like a it's like it's like file transfer but it's like a weird way to think of it at least for me I thought that was a, a kind of a weird way I mean it's, e it's easy well it's easy and it's confusing at the same time I'm, but yeah, so you can do file transfer as long as the clipboard control is allowed um, another thing uh, another one of the per permissions that you can give is um, that you can give permission allowing the other person to block your keyboard and mouse so they can actually prevent you from using your keyboard and mouse and they're the only ones able to do that now the, the a, a, kind of a neat thing that the program does is that even if you haven't given them permission to block you you kind of block each other in other words if one of you is using the the, the mouse the other person can't for a second while while they're doing it so in other words you know like only one person can use it at a time so that that's helpful you know it makes avoids confusion and whatnot uh, let's see there's also a chat feature so you can chat back and forth within the AnyDesk program uh, the remote user and and you can can chat back and forth uh, previous connections are auto saved in a little quick dial area down at the bottom of the window so that's handy so in other words any you know, once two computers have connected, then on each one of those computers, that connection is saved. And so if I want to connect with you again, it's a quick, I don't, I don't have to look up your, or get your number again, your ID number. I can just click and, and connect with you that way. So that's a good point too. The ID number is only needed that first time. Once the connection is made, then it's sort of saved. Uh, you still have to give permission each time though. Uh, um, excuse me. Um, one thing, too, that the program not only has to be installed on each computer, but it actually has to be open for them to connect. Now, I believe you can go in the settings and change that, but it's default set to where the program has to be open in, in order for you to connect to the, that computer. Um, so what else do I want to tell you about this program? Well, it has very fast reaction time, so I was very impressed by that. It is a free program. Now, there is a paid version of it. Uh, near as I could tell, the main advantage that the paid version offers is you can have unlimited sessions at the same time. So I think that's geared you know, more towards the IT professional. But for the everyday person, it seems like the free version would work just fine. And of course, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to their website where you can download this program if you'd like to. It's not, uh, I don't get anything if you download the program. I mean, it's a free program unless you choose to pay for it. So obviously, there's, there's no money uh, changing hands there. So it's a neat program and uh, pretty easy to use. I was able to figure it out quite quickly uh, without any you know external help I did find a product manual online that they have too it's quite in depth so you know that that was that was uh, available for you as well but really just sort of poking around with it I was able to figure out uh, most of the uh, most of the use so that's it uh, this one's I guess run a little bit still less than 10 minutes a little over five wasn't sure how long it would take to go over this but the AnyDesk program uh, if you're interested in uh, remotely accessing oh and I knew there was one other thing I wanted to mention is that normally someone has to be on the other end to accept the connection but if it's a situation like I talked about before like you want to connect to your work computer from home or your home computer on vacation you can set up a password which will enable 
unattended access. So that is an option. So, uh, but otherwise, someone does have to be on the other end to accept the connection unless you set it up that way. So good point to make. I knew there was one more thing I wanted to mention before I wrapped up. So that's it. Um, thanks, as always, for watching the Always Better Challenge show. Until next time, I'm your humble host, Joe Bedford, reminding you to go out there and make it happen.